up? Once again, it's Too Cool to Con, and you know who's on here, the most popular man that you find all throughout YouTube and every other platform you could think of, oh. Mr. Reggie Wright Jr. How you been doing, Reggie? Respect, respect. Glad to be back on your show, Reek. Appreciate you reaching out, brother. Right. How's it on? Um, because it's like I be seeing, I be getting updates on you doing bomb first, doing all kind of things. Like, dang, wait a minute. He's over here. He's over, he's over on the other platforms. I mean, you stay a busy man. Well, yeah, to be honest, I got a lot of time on my hands, but trying to get this physical therapy back and all of that. But, you know, to be honest, bomb first is real easy because we only take that about twice a month and we just break them up, cut them up six, eight, eight minute parts and put them up. Right. So, so it's not like we're working every day and I'm wearing the same clothes every day. Like, right. people be like, did you ever change your clothes? I'll be like, huh? Do you realize I only take this and we just. Break them up like we do them bad, you know. Right. Now, as far as the physical therapy, how's that coming, you know? It's coming. It could be moving quicker, but I'm grateful to be here, man, right. still. Exactly. So, I ain't, I'm not complaining. Mm-hmm. I have got one of my favorite gospel songs. It's a song one guy say, I won't complain. Hmm. Yeah. You get another day to wake up and see all your, your, your lovely family. That's that's the that's the one right there. I won't complain. I was just out of Disneyland all day yesterday with my grandsons and my wife and moms. And it was one of the best times. One of the coldest best times I had in a long time. Mm. Yeah. But I since, since I got you, I won't say first because I'm quite sure other people have been hitting you in the last couple, what, about hour, hour and a half with them <laughs> broke on the news with Mr. Uh, uh, Puff Daddy's place being raided in L.A. and Miami from Homeland Security? What do you think they may be, you know, certain? Oh, you. Well, let's see, if you've been listening to the bomb first like you should, you'll see I've been telling y'all since about November that they were coming, and I predicted that they would be, be done before March. Didn't know it was going to be on the anniversary of Biggie's uh, album coming out exactly 27 years to, to the day. Mm. But... I thought the deal, right? right? Look it up when it dropped. March the 25th. Didn't know that. I don't even know if the FBI know that. Mm. But boy, don't God got a way to make his stuff happen. Right. But I'm not saying that he's been arrested yet. Right. I just think they fishing. They fishing. Where smoke there's fire, hopefully. But they fishing. And I'm sure it's turning this world upside down. But I tried to warn the brother. You better go with Russell. Get your money. <laughs> Liquidate everything and get over there to Bali with Russell. Right. Go away. Yeah, with with Russell. Russell. <laughs> right. Go somewhere where they can't extradite and take your money, nigga. But then now tell me this now. We always hear about, you know, the police rating, the feds rating. How's this different with Homeland Security? You know, that's kind of not so much they, new, but, you know, you don't never hear about them rating. They created the Homeland Security because what happened is agencies, people don't know this, compete with each other. The FBI competes with the DEA. The DEA compete with the FT- ATL. The IRS investigators compete with all of them. They all compete with each other. Mm. And so when you have people in law enforcement, so what they did is they created the Homeland Security to be like the head, the branch, where they all got to report to this one particular person right. and it be under there so they won't be stepping on each other's toes. Because contrary to what y'all think and what people think that all law enforcement get along, they really don't. Everybody want to get that straw in their hat. Right. So when you got a case as big as Puffs and all of that, everybody want to be that star so they can quit and write the book and, and, and be consulted on TV shows and tell their family, hey, I'm the one that solved that case. Right. So 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 people won't be stepping on each other's toes. They they, they developed this uh, branch. It, did, it happened on Obama Watch, to be honest, mm. where, you know, they got tired of everybody, like, stepping on each other's toes, and they said, okay, this is who's in charge. This is who make the decision. Mm. And, and so we, we work up under the Homeland Security branch of the uh, law enforcement. Okay. Man, so... Is it like more like a domino effect? Like, okay, this person has been arrested, so now they're collaborating with other people or other agencies. In, in, in they, exactly. That's a good point. What they do is they all got that one person that they can trust because you have leaks in every department. 
you know, you have uh, FBI agents as friends with reporters, DEAs that are friends of reporters and all of that. And so they have these one, two, this sense of group that's probably work at the FBI and work at the DEA office and all of that that's working on assigned to a task force under Homeland Security where they won't, you know, where they're hoping that these are people that supposedly be high on the branch and it's just like if anything goes wrong or get leaked, then who's ever in charge over at Homeland Security is, is, is going to be responsible right. or can find a leak. But when you have two different agencies working on stuff, you know, it's hard to say who was wrong or who, who leaked it. Mm. So unfortunately, you know, something big is ain't none of those things with all the conspirators going to go and say, oh, this, 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 and this. I mean, when they come at a person like that, with as much money and power and publicity they have, they generally like to be right. Hmm. There hasn't been any arrest warrant issued, to my knowledge. Okay. But uh, there's a search warrant, but as we done learned, we learned from, i give you two examples. With the current president and the ex-president, how uh, with Donald Trump, when they raided his home, they didn't arrest him that day. They didn't, you know, tell him to come in until a couple of months later to arrest him. You know, we we'll same with Keithy D. They arrested his house in July. They didn't arrest him until sometime in September. Mm. Uh, Biden, the president, the current president, they arrested his house and that never happened. Right. So, so that can happen as well. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people get this because the police came to your house. You know, something's going, you know, it's usually something that's so smoke. But they also do some fishing expeditions as well, where they're just looking to prove or disprove. That's what a good investigator, a good cop wants to be able to do: prove so, or disprove an allegation. So is the is the Homeland Security in in place? Because you know how like okay, Vegas can't go to L.A. and 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 run a raid. So we're well, the umbrella of yeah. Homeland, so we can go to any state and. Now, feds can do that. Yeah. Feds can do it anywhere. You know, if you're an FBI agent, you can do it anywhere. Okay. you're a DEA agent, you can do it anywhere. Okay. It's just mainly the control where you might have a DEA. You may have an IRS uh, case going and a DEA case going. I'm trying to think of a TV show. I watch TV shows all the time where the fans be coming in and they be like, you just messed up our case. It usually happened between local departments and, and the federal governments. Right. But, but it was something big that had happened where you had the FBI working a case and the ATF working a case and they stepped over each other's toes and it messed up a lot of stuff. And so, mm. so they came up with the Homeland Security and where that person, whoever was the boss, they always say the Attorney General is the ultimate uh, law enforcement agent. But really, the person that's over Homeland Security got a lot of juice. Mm. Yeah. But now... He can't tell nobody for the secret service. I mean, not the secret service, but the CIA what to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. He just on the homeland. He just control everything in the United States. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you got the CIA, which, you know, they usually do stuff that's out of the country, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You have so many different type of agencies in law enforcement outside the government. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't believe we call them the three-letter boys. Right. They all got three letters. Yeah. ATF, FBI, DEA, CIA. <laughs> That's why you ever hear brothers on the streets, they say the, the three letter boys. Mm. That's what they're talking about. Now, now I'm going to say this. This next question, I know you say you don't do conspiracies. And it, to me, it's not a conspiracy. It's something that it. I don't, I, I've never hear, heard anyone answer or, or anything like that. It's like, the, I know this music, I know this video, but... When I break it down to you, I, I want you to kind of, because it, it, it's never been touched. Now, when Snoop back in 96, 95 made that, um, you know, the LBC crew, and that, uh -oh. that song appeared on the thin line between love and hate. Yes. How, how did that come about? Because I'm thinking, when I think back to that movie, Bobby Brown was in it, and I know Suge knew Bobby Brown, and then I think back, it says Warner Brothers. Like, if you look up the, the information, yeah. it says Warner Brothers. It don't say Death Row. And it says Correct. Can Dam that it was recorded at. And then it also said he had Doggy Style Records. But in the video, he doesn't rap. He doesn't talk. So I'm like, was he not saying anything because he's under contract and can't? 
say anything in that video or, or, or how did all that transpire? What happened was uh, Snoop got a, 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 a little um, impatient. I guess I'll use that word. And, you know, I'm sure his own boys was hitting him up and, and, and pressing him and all of that because, you know, they be wanting to get a deal and it's like he, he had. And so Shug and, and Snoop did fall out behind it. Uh, but that's when, if you ever hear any stories on Bob first when I talked about how Snoop snuck off and Juho kind of touched on it as well. He stepped off the Death Jam and he went and took a, and took a shot to deal on the East Coast for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And that probably got that song put, pretty much put on the uh, the soundtrack. Mm. But it was a soundtrack is why. And uh, Shook was going to eventually, and that's when Shook and Snoop came to terms where he was going to have him have his own label. It just was making a little, it wasn't going as quick as he wanted. That's why you had the Machiavelli. That's why you had the Doggy Style. That's why you had the Death De- Row East. And uh, there was one more label. Oh, Hammer Time. And Hammer Time, the shit was, was helping them create and set up. But all that was was because I was on a soundtrack, a music soundtrack, and that's who distributed the song. You'll find a lot of Death Row songs but was back it- in the uh, that were on soundtracks. Was it on the strength of, of, of Suge knowing Bobby Brown? Because he no. also appeared in a movie, too. So I'm like, Whoa. no. Okay. It was, it was all on Snoop's relationship. He went out and made it happen on his own. Okay. Uh, it, but it, that was his group that he was pushing. That was eventually, which was, uh, which was the LBC crew. Mm. But wouldn't that, that be inside? Uh, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be in, like, contract conflict well, a little bit? Let's think of the Rough Riders. Remember the Rough Riders with DMX? Right. You know, they, you can be signed to a label. Uh, when DMX had his deal over at, um, uh, with Def Jam. But they took the other stuff over to Interscope. Mm. What I'm saying, you can take and shop your deals and shop your stuff around as long as you're not exclusive for somebody. Mm. Um, and, um, hey, uh, what the world is do with this? Got his boys, his crew. Sure, but that, that's what the, the bad thing where a lot of interviews have been coming out lately where it was like, Pop didn't want us to sign with this with Shug or Death Row and all that. It was because people were in their position. Death Row was like the, the the Mecca at the time, you know, the top of the, top of the food chain mm-hmm. where Shug was training them to get these little niggas up under you. Right. Have them sign to you where you could eat like I'm eating, get some of their publishing. You know, where well, you can make money. And and he was showing them the way to set that up. Mm. And so that, that's what was happening. Okay. And, yeah. Now, I had another uh, one that I, I I want you to put some light to. I, I know you say you knew about the ringtones and when they first, you know, came. And, you know, a lot of people made money with that. But think of the today where we're at now where they got, you know, a streaming. AI, AI can mock your voice. So would that be the new cast thing, like ringtones, where they could, you know, make money off of, you know, that AI voice of a celebrity or, or singer or something like that? Yeah, it's doing it. And it's a song right out there right now with Nick Dogg and Tupac. Hmm. That's real good. But the thing that people got to remember is there's two components to uh, rapping and stuff. And, uh, what are those two components? Number one, you gotta have a nice beat. Right. Number two, more importantly, you gotta have somebody to write the motherfucking lyrics that we can understand. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Right. And so, even though you got Tupac's voice, and we we know the winners on voices, you know DMX voice, uh, you know several people that got had unique voices that we in love with, right? Right. But you still gotta be able to write like they would. Mm. Would you wanna write? A song, would you want somebody to write a song for Tupac with his voice talking about Jack and Jill went up the hill? <laughs> you know? Right. Oh, you still got to have somebody that's writing like Pop was writing. So, you think, so that's be, what the, you think it'd be different for a rapper versus like an actor, like say, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, 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 who's in Shawshank Redemption? Um, Morgan Freeman. Like, you know, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, that deep voice. Yeah, yeah him and uh, because yeah. Yeah. they kind of just kind of read scripts it's not so much what they're you know is what they're talking about, about. Almost. yeah yeah it's, 
just all about the writing, man. It's, it's, it's like three components. Hmm. You need the voice, the star power, but you also need, in my mind, the, the, the you know, because most of our big people like Taylor Swift and Beyonce and all that, they say they be write those songs. How many times we done heard later on from the other people that wrote those songs? Right, right. You know, you hear that all the time where you're saying that the person wrote a song, but, you know, he dimboed it for me. Pop, with Unconditional Love. That song eventually came out just because of what happened to Pop, but he was really right there for him, MC Hammer. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, it takes, uh, you gotta know who you're writing for in the crowd, and I, I still think the, the art and the talent, even for AI, is going to be, you have to be a good writer and write the style of the person that you're writing for, which Tupac is, is easy to, to mimic. You know, uh, my boy Dorillas, he may mix the hell out of, uh, of, uh, of Tupac music and writing. He would make a killing right now if he got with a person to do AI because he done studied Tupac so long and known Tupac. Well, we don't like his voice, maybe, but we, you know, we even tell the difference. People that really know pop music, right. but he could pick up the baton, the baton for pop, and, and really wrote wrote some lyrics for people because he has studied him so much, and he and he also has a gift to write. Where I think he would be a person that could do that. Could you or I do it and write for pop? And we say, oh, well, we got the AI, we got that. But do you have that mentality? Right. Do you have that study that podcast mm. would be the problem. Right. Yeah. Now, I think this is another one where I, I guess, you know, people that are about to enter in a business or enter in a business relationships with people, how will one determine someone that's actually the proprietor of a, vi- a business versus one that's just like the appointed face of the company? Like, I just run it, but I'm not really the man. Versus, I'm I'm the one that you know gets everything done. How can someone determine the difference in something like that? Well, um, <laughs> it has got to be about the stockholders. You have to know how to be able to. You could be an authorized agent or the president or the CEO and not be the owner of the company. Okay, and so. The main thing is, uh, well, basically, uh, and I know what you're saying, it's all about the stockholders and how much you got the shares. The perfect uh, show to watch for a lot of listeners, if y'all go back and listen to it and look at Empire, when Empire was, was showing about the stock owners and all of that stuff, yeah. when, and the record company and how Lucius was having problems, but even though they removed him as the face of the board by the, you know, by the vote of the stockholders, he still was like, you know, well, like he wasn't losing, he was losing money. He still can generate his income. He just couldn't be in charge of the board, mm. you know, without the, the number of votes and stuff like that. But that's why in a lot of business deals with people sell, they usually always main total control. People say, I'll sell you my company, but I'm still on maintain 51%. And then you have 49%. Because mm. people like still to have that last final vote or that last, you know, control. Another good show is that show with uh, Tyler Perry and uh, Tyler Perry when, when he had the white lady when the son was trying to take over the company yeah. and all of that and, and, you know and she brought in no extra vote uh, uh, you know shareholders to vote her away uh, you know that's that's when you know the difference but to learn to know the difference you just have to pull the records on the, co- the corporation okay. to know who the majority shareholder or not but, yeah. Now, now, this one I think will fit on uh, kind of a level that we kind of talked about that we never, you know, um, well, you kind of aired it in a, in a different way, but I want to approach it like um, the difference between one's rooted legacy over a fame-driven persona. Now, when I say that, I'm saying like, like look at your father being rooted in Compton and, you know, you you spreading law enforcement to you and making a difference within the community, actual, you know, like accounts where people are like, yeah, you know, I was thinking this and you done did this and, and getting accolades versus someone that's probably been on the uh, TV screen or, or interviews and making it seem like they're so great. But when it maybe comes to family 
and they they ain't really did really nothing for their family, but for a fame way, oh, they're they're so great. But you know, I, to me, being a leader in your family and in your community makes you, you know, legendary. What's the difference? I mean, a lot of people kind of the youngsters mix it up, like, oh, well, he's on TV and people say it's great like that. Versus, no, he's been rooted in the community, making a difference. You know, you know, saving lives actually. You know. Yeah, well, you just spoke it. You, you just spoke. You gave the game, but unfortunately, people um, uh, give people with money and um, celebrity over people that are community oriented or uh, you know conscious or family man that out there feeding the homeless and stuff like that and doing stuff like that. We'll look at a person that. You know, no disrespect to LeBron James or Kobe Bryant or anything like that. You know, that that that's famous or have a lot of money or you know, like Puffy, P, P. Diddy, what are he going through right now? You you'll say, well, just because they got money and all of that, you think in their mind that they're happy and they and they don't have issues and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What I would say was, you know, always look at a person's character and try to look up to a person that has a good character. We all fucked up. We all got to do bad things or, or have done things that maybe we wish we wouldn't have done. Right. But did I do it out of malice? Or did I do it out of just messed up and or made a bad decision? You say I'm a, a, a supervisor used to still tell me, be down for, I'd rather be down for doing the wrong thing for them to be down for not doing anything. Hmm. What do you mean by like that? At least try. Right. You may make a mistake. You may mess up. But try to do 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 the right thing. Mm-hmm. But the, but don't be the person that just don't do nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And sit back in this creek critique and and just stand fast. At least try. Get out there and do something. Right. We all gonna make mistakes. We all might not do the right thing. Hmm. But do something. Right. And try. But I think I might have got away from your question a little bit. But my thing is, unfortunately, we are hard to uh, like the beautiful girl or like the person with a lot of money and all of that. Instead of having a girl that's going to be with you and going to feed you and make sure you're right and have your back and hold you down, you know, you just got to evaluate what you want in life and what type of person you want. Right. And eventually you would be it. You get in a position like I am, where you can't do a lot of stuff for yourself, and where most women probably would leave you. And then when you have a woman that's with you, that's you know stand by and making sure everything is good, you'll learn to appreciate people like that. Hmm. Well, what what makes me at, or say this because you know a lot of people don't stand on. They rather okay, it's easier to, to dip to the lie. When I say this, because I remember it's probably maybe. Maybe 20 years ago, I had a um, SS Monte Carlo and I spun a donut in the middle of the intersection and I pulled up right back to my street. But I seen a, a you know, patrol car rolling up the street. And, oh, man, he's about to give me my issue. He just pulled up. He's like, did you see? Did you look and make sure everybody was not, not in the intersection and things like that? And look at me dead in my face. And like, yeah, I looked and, and nobody was in the intersection. He's like, all right, that's all I want to know. The, yeah. the officer that was with him, he must have been like a rookie. He was just looking at him like, why ain't you going to give him his issue? He's like, you know, he was honest. You know, I mean, he did. He know what he did, and you know it ain't cool what he did. So, you yeah. know, I respect that more than anything. Then you trying to tell me a lie to my face after I done seen you do what you did. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that, that that's another type of scenario on a person that <clears throat> you learn it, then you probably got respect for that guy. If you would have saw that particular officer in another type of situation or something like that, you would have treated him totally different hmm. because you know he was a man of good respect that he gave you a pass or he gave you some respect right. at the time when he didn't have to. Mm-hmm. And, and you hold him dear. My father and myself, even me a few times, but then my father gets uh, accolades from a lot of people because of breaks and, and wisdom that he had given and handed out when he probably could have been like somebody else and had a stern hand right. and, and, and be led by the law. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, as you learn and as you get older, you'll learn. And if you listen to me, you'll know that that's why I said, 
a lot of people, I don't think people should be law enforcement officers and stuff until at least the age of 28, 26, because you don't have enough life experience mm. to go out and, 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 and adjust things or tell things, you know. But you I think it was different with your, yours because you had a uh, you had a guy in hand, a father that was already yeah. within it, so. It helped, but I made a lot of mistakes too. Right. I remember going to a house one time and the law says, the law says you got to do some paperwork. Mm. Meaning, uh, whenever you have a domestic, domestic situation going on where, you know, husband and wife fighting and stuff. Right. It was some 60, 70 year old people, mm. black old, old people, their kids, grandkids, and everybody was at the house. Like, couldn't believe grandma and grandpa was in there arguing, right? Right. And he probably pushed her or did something to her. Mm. The law only said that you have the right paperwork. But everybody was there dealing with it and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, we've come for whatever reason. Me, being a young cop, you know, I was like, okay, somebody got to go to jail. Either grandma going to jail or grandpa going to jail. Right. Grandpa, my, thank God, my training officer at that time was older, more experienced. He goes, no, 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 baby, wait a minute. All the law says we got to do is write paperwork on it, write, write this up, and let the detectives deal with this later. Right. You got these people who obviously remorse is not like a hostile situation. The kids, the grandparents, everybody over there trying to resolve this and get it out. Why would you take this, these old people to jail? Right. Well, and change their life around like these. These are obviously good people, messed up, had a bad day or whatever. And you just don't have to police like that. Mm. You don't have to be that type of way. And so I say that to say it took things like that for me to learn. And that now as a 50 year old man, I sure would have held it the way I did back then. Mm-hmm. Glad I had somebody that was older to teach me and stuff like that. Right. But just how I could have scored that old man or that old lady, you know, me, 21, 22 year old person, and just like, oh, the law said you got to go to jail. Somebody got to go to jail. Mm-hmm. That ain't what the law said, number one. Right. That's just what the policy was. Because mm-hmm. it was like, if you got to write paperwork, you might as well just add one more line to the paperwork. Subject was arrested for such and such and have a body for it. Right. But his point was, why would you want a piece of people that obviously messed up, had a bad day, but they, you could tell that this wasn't going to happen again. Right. And he was right. Mm. So I say that just to say, yeah, you know, experience and, and age and all of that. Um, helps you with stuff like that. Hmm. Yeah. Now, now this one, I, I, I mean, I, I don't see you speak on, you know, um, different people's situations when it comes to celebrities, and you know, when you said sperm donor, a lot of people they get triggered when you say that. But what is the difference? I mean, I know the difference, but what is the difference between a father and a sperm donor? You know, the actual difference. In my opinion. Yeah. In my your, opinion. Your, your opinion. My opinion. My a sperm donor is anybody that's laid up and, and made a kid. In my opinion, made a pile. Anybody can do that. You go to a, a sperm bank and you can just jack off in a in, 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 in a tube and made a kid. Right. Does that make you daddy? Does that make you a father? Hmm. Just because I had a one time affair or a statement with somebody, had sex with somebody, they, they they became pregnant, but I didn't raise them, didn't do anything for them uh, in life ever. Should I be called father? Huh. Should I be called daddy? No, I'm just your birth daddy, your sperm donor. Right. That's what I call a sperm donor. That's what I mean by a father to me is somebody that, hey, son. Oh, hey, honey. Here's fifty dollars. Go buy him a pair of tennis shoes. Hey, uh, hey, how you doing in school today? You need some help with this? What did you do? Come here, boy. Don't be doing that. You don't say that. Right. That ain't how you talk back to your mama. Mm-hmm. I mean, all of those things, that's what a father is to me. Hmm. So that's why I say a burn or versus a daddy or a father. Now, do you think sometimes why why people claim excuses because the lines get blurred? Like, okay, say if their parents were together and then it's divorce. So now 
they may be seeing their their kid less. So you know, it, it may fall into a different kind of way. You can still be a you can still be a, a father uh, on weekends and stuff like that, or even just a phone call. Right. Hey, how are you doing? What did you do? How would you get? What's your poor cards? Mm-hmm. Where you know what 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 you get? Why well, man? You, you should be getting no C. You smarter than that, man. Right. You didn't read that up to a B next time. Mm-hmm. You know, you can still do that. You can still be a father, a positive figure. Hey, man, we don't talk to women like that. Right. Hey, hey, daughter. No, don't, you don't act like that. Close your leg. Don't be sitting on that man's lap. Right. You know. Hey, there, there, there's ways you could do things that still that, that don't have to be in the household every day. Right. Unfortunately, with us, when the women. Cut us off. We we want to cut everybody off. Mm. Well, you know what? What you gonna do for me? And well, she ain't taking care of me, so I'm gonna go over here and take care of this kid. Mm. I'll take care of this person because this mom is doing whatever for me now. Mm. I have a problem with that. Right. Yeah. Now, do you think? Because because then it's almost offsets. Like I'm being father to like you said, I'm being father to this one that you didn't birth, but you you actually got a kid over here and you're not doing anything. So it's almost either way, even if it, but they're both my natural kids. Okay, and I'm living with one and not living with the other. Right, it's still a problem. I can still make calls. I can still interact. I can still have my two days of a week or three days, four days a month or whatever. To, to, to communicate and and, and 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 help and support and all of that, you know, I think all of that comes with being a dad, being a father. Do you think a lot of times that like brothers, maybe some sisters, but I say brothers have that problem because okay, now I'm with this new woman, but she she got some problem with my 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 old lady, so I don't want my kid. She don't want my kid coming around here. I mean, they shouldn't be listening. You shouldn't you shouldn't have no one else hindering you. From seeing your kid and providing for him, that shouldn't be. A, a good and you ain't excuse. a father. Yeah, you ain't a father. Why would you want to be with a woman that will stop you from taking care of your responsibilities? Right. I I I could be with a woman. I wouldn't call that my woman. <laughs> right. But you telling me, why would you want me to be this way to this kid? What did this kid do? I mean, as long as I'm not over there trying to sleep with her every time I drop her off and all that, you should have a problem. Right. You should want to. Well, then you go pick her up. You feel that that's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And you bring my kid to me. Right. That's how you deal with that situation. And, and if they can't deal with that and deal with that, you don't want to be with them because you just don't want to be with them. But they, 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 they don't, they don't get it yet. Yeah, because essentially they causing well, not just them alone, but they're they they help cars causing a hardship between you know you and your 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 kid that you need to raise that still need to be raised. Exactly. Exactly, and the kid, no matter what, the kids are next. You know, they're next to be here. Right. You're responsible for them until at least eighteen. Mm-hmm. You'll find out later if you're a good person. You're responsible for all your life. Right. And put minimum 18. Hmm. But I still, you know, shit, I'm 56, 57. Uh, my daddy still be telling me, boy, what you doing? Why you say that? Why you, you know, he still checks me. And, hmm. and, and my daughter's are 33, 34. I still worry about them more than I worry about my 22-year-old son, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know, that that's a myth about that 18-year-old son. Right, bro. right. Boy, man, if you're a real person, you go, that ain't, you worry about them daily. <laughs> Once again, like you said, that's that's just what the law says. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Man. Well, that, that kind of rolled into the, the the last one I was gonna say because I was gonna say, okay. uh, does uh dysfunction still count as parenting? But essentially, it it doesn't because it's like you taking care of this one, but you're not taking care of the other one. So it's almost like it's canceling each other out. Now I'm one of the believes when a, a kid get to the point where they. I don't need you. I, I, you know, you, you. Sometimes you gotta discipline people by not being as vocal, or you gotta show them a different type of love. But you gotta try until they least eighteen to twenty years old to be like, hey, I know you're mad right now. I know you don't agree with this, but I love you, son. I love you, daughter. Because they gonna tell you, especially when they start. They get that little wet between when he get his little. 
get you taken care of. She get her little thing taken care of. They go, they they change. Right. They get different on you. Right. But you still got to be there to be the voice of reason because they eventually going to come back. Now, do you still believe in the being voice of reason? Like, you know, your child raised mom and dad, but maybe he finds someone that he loves, but they don't have the same kind of situation. Would you advocate them being with a person that has been without their father or, or, or mother, or you think it might be a harder role for them to get together since they don't come from that kind of environment? Yeah, things usually happen, but, you know, opposite of tracks, as we know. Right. And uh, uh, and so uh, I just believe in just try to look at a person's character. Mm. I'm all about not ready been to jail, ready this, ready this, or this person is this or that. How's his character? What that person is he? Mm. Does he care about his Mother's Day? And hey, Mama, how you doing, baby? Sorry I couldn't buy you that. Here's a card or Happy Mother's Day or. Is he the type of dude that fuck that bitch? I don't care about mama, mama, mm. this or mama, that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, uh, you know. That makes um, me think of the movie with Denzel when the guy was in the Navy, you know, and his mom basically abandoned him, but he still yeah. wanted to make a good life for himself, but he still was dealing with them demons and not having his mother around. So it's like, I want to, I'm doing right, but am I really doing right? Because I don't really have what she has, you know, going on in, in her family, you know, it, it almost makes them second guess their existence almost. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, this is a lot psychological problem, but all I ask people and all I try to do is, is, uh, character, I'm big on character, man. Right. And believe who people show you they are. Mm-hmm. I believe who they show you are, but I judge people by their character, not what they have done or what they say. Right. I, I, I love to be with a person that has good character hmm. than anything, right. money, uh, attraction, or anything. Because all of that wears off. Mm-hmm. And then you're unhappy. <laughs> be over there, be, be in the Bahamas on a vacation or something, but still mad. Because <laughs> you can't deal with that person and their attitude. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I see so many people, oh, man, she just drink occasionally. Like, no, man, she's actually a drunk. But who am I to tell you? You the one with yeah. her every, every night, you know? You know, that yeah. might be an actual problem, but, you know. Yeah. 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 Shoot, I, I like this one because it's like you breaking into what a lot of people be commenting. Because I be seeing them comments, I'm like, why are they commenting so mindlessly? Do you really know why, you know, Reggie's saying what he's saying? I mean, you got to go deep to the reason why he's saying the things he's saying. A lot of people, I think they come from them type of environments and, and, and never really had someone to really sit down with them. Like, you know, you move like this. This is the reason why this happens, you know, or you're facing this type of stuff because, you know, you grew up without this person or you had this person. They wasn't doing it right. Enrique, man, I, I just try to, you know, I know I can't help everybody. I know that a lot of people ain't going to listen and, 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 and tune into it. But I tell people, and I'm serious about it, if I have one or two people, you know, most people say, oh, I need to be, reach more than that. I don't. If I have one person, I'm good. If one person changed their life, I had a person one time, I was like, man, reach out to your, your mom and dad and just tell them happy birthday or happy Mother's Day or this, 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 this. I'm sorry. And he hit me back a month or two later. So I did, took your advice, Rich. And I did that. And me and my mom hadn't talked for years. Mm. And now we back, you know, communicating with each other. And that's what stuff like that that I'm about. That's what make me happy all the day. Oh, you the man. You the, you, you predicted this and all that. Okay, that's cool. Well, hopefully that's why you listen to me. But what I really want you to catch is that family, character. Love, respect, mm -hmm. and demand it and give it. Right. Yes, yeah. sir. Because you know, people you know take take time and lives for granted. It's like here today, gone tomorrow, for real. Man, I done been experienced that. Man, I done experienced that this week with friends mm. that passed away. That one guy went and had a late, uh, weight loss surgery, mm. and he. Died a day later after having it. I mean, just 
42, 43 years old. Damn. A beautiful daughter, beautiful family, and he was just trying to, you know, get, get rid of that diabetes and high, hypertension and stuff. And mm. Trying to do better for himself and die. And so now I, I learn, I tell my friends, men, or I'm not gay, I'm no homo, or Pauls, or all those terms people say. But I tell somebody, I love you, man. Appreciate you. Right. I, I suggest people do that. Because you never know when when that day gonna come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man. Well, I appreciate you for coming on too. Cool, kind of like you always do, dropping science, dropping uh, actual information that people could use in their life. You know. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you having me on there, man. Anytime you need me, you know how to get me, Rick. All right. Well, what what uh, new? Because uh, I mean, I know you're gonna be everywhere, but. Name some of the places that they're they going to catch you. I'm like, I want to oh. see him on this one. Where else he'd be appearing? A bomb first, always. And then always, uh, and then me and James got a show on, on Vlad that we doing on a podcast on. So if y'all go and check us out on Vlad, uh, 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 on his Spotify or on his YouTube channel. We appreciate that as well. Okay. You still be on Cam Capone too? I mean, I'm cool with Cam, but he hasn't invited me. Oh, okay. And him or Art, but whatever they do. But, you know, when you get overexposed to a lot of different things, then people don't want to be bothered with you. Yeah. And they like, you know, because the, the, the YouTubers are weird. They don't like the overexposure, especially when they when they have a bigger platform. Okay. And so they'd rather go to the, to the next person, which I get. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, shoot. I'm always checking in every time I see a, a, a update pop in. Like, man, what's Reggie you talking about? Yeah, uh, what that fool talking about today? Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate your support, Rick. Appreciate your support, Rick. Appreciate your support, Rick. Four, Four seven. seven.